I'm curious if this is going to be a thing with Jeremy Grant because we've seen a little bit of it lately. So he's the three right now. You got Millsap and Jokic. So he's the three. He's matched up with smaller guys. And what I like here, he's not a great rebounder to begin with, but fortunately, Jokic and Millsap are. He gets down court and gets deep position. The Nuggets don't run a lot of like post ups, you know, for him. And I think thankfully so. But maybe against some of these mismatches, specifically in transition, it's a great way to sort of catch the defense off guard. I mean, he just elevates over. Still would like him to maybe go a little bit more at the rim, but doesn't matter. He gets a, a nice little four footer. Um, again, seen that a lot over these first three games. Hadn't seen that a lot before that. M Jeremy Grant, maybe, maybe there's something to him playing the three more and more. Another example here of uh, Jeremy Grant getting into the post. Not necessarily on transition. This one's actually more just an audible with Yoke. You see this quick side action here. They switch. They already were going guard to guard, but Murray even a smaller guard. And you see Jokic here. He likes this. He says, all right, everybody get out. You go get in there. Operate. Force them to double you. Because, I mean, this is, you're, this is a huge size mismatch. Sure enough, three of them come here. Torrey Craig with the great cut. Nice open layup uh, right there. Jeremy Grant playing smaller and smaller might be a real weapon for the Nuggets. Here he is again, getting down to the post. You get that switch, okay. And Patty Mills on him. Good job by PJ Dozier, then clears out. Let's operate out of Jeremy Grant from the post. And what do you know? Makes a capable read. Now, PJ fumbles it, but that's a, that's a very, very good read and a good option for Denver. Love this play. It's one of my favorite plays from the game. A double high screen um, play that Denver used to run for Trey Lyles. I've, I've talked about this play quite a bit. They've started running it now for Michael Porter. And you're going to get this double high cross screen and then Mason Plumlee setting a screen on Michael Porter's guy. So automatically here you force a difficult action with the double screens that it's almost impossible for the defense to get through. So this guy has to step up, which leads to the secondary action here for the screen. But what I love most about this is P.J. Dozier sort of feeling too on on ball here and feeling that he can drag both of them away here he doesn't even look up he's only going here to vacate space over here for Plumlee who now gets a wide open shot if we watch it in real time you really see just how just I mean watch PJ's head and how he he's not looking backwards but he feels two defenders so he knows if I just go over here there's an opening fantastic play and a nice wrinkle because to be honest with you this is one of the nice things about having Porter here and Plumlee together specifically I think in, in the future you can have Jeremy Grant maybe even Bull Bull in this spot but having a guy that has such gravity rolling to the rim it makes it so difficult for these three guys to coordinate together to not lose uh, the right thing now you maybe have a defense sag off here and you leave Michael Porter wide open this is just really a pick your poison one and pj dozier really ran it to absolute perfection talked about a, a very a variation of this in the last one but monte's done such a great job of really attacking the second defender and putting him in the pickle being patient because what this guy's trying to do is prevent what with, with the rim protector here uh, on the pick and roll is trying to do is protect monte from getting to the basket long enough for Derek white to recover but want what monte does is he plays in between here just long enough to freeze him to think it's time to go and then he goes this is perfect pick and roll attacking right here boom froze him got him wide open layup really crafty and really great pick and roll work by monte morris Love this play here because this is um, just like a basic uh, just sort of pick and roll set for Denver out of horns. And you see they run Millsap over to clear the side. They get uh, Monte coming back to get the ball. And then Jokic is going to set the screen on this side. And what they've successfully done now is created the single side tag with the single side tagger being um, Derek White who's guarding MPJ. He, he can help off, but you risk an open shot for MPJ. And what I love is that... You know, MPJ has, I think, 12 or 14 points at this point. He had that really hot start from three. He has three three-pointers. He's already got the respect of the defense to say, you guys are on your own. Well, there's nobody else over here. There's only these two, so you're stretching the defense to really rotate over. Monte does just an elite job of getting to Jokic, and it's a wide-open layup. And if we fast-forward to the next set and the very next possession for Denver, here, let's fast-forward just a bit, get down here. We get the exact same action, and we get an equally as as perfect result here. Coming back. Again, what is it that we have? We have a defense that's overloading because they are worried about Michael Porter. So now we're going to kind of crowd, crowd the space here. Okay. Vacated a whole lot. And you got nice cutting going. Just that, That's Nuggets basketball. That's the Nuggets basketball we used to know. And just that little bit of extra spacing, I think, opens things up. This is one of Jokic's um, 
sort of like signature defensive skills. So right now he's in a position with a pick and roll with two guys. You got the rolling hurdle, you got the ball handling. I think this DeMar DeRozan, I can't quite tell. Jokic splitting the difference here. And if we just watch in slow motion, he gets his hands out on it. And then back to recover, forces the steal. Just those great hands. And he ends up with a steal here and a stop. But th there's two parts of this. One, the first part is... This guy right here is now in a disadvantage uh, position here, trying to guard both of these guys. You want to try to force him to make the read that you want. You're kind of you're playing, um, <clears throat> what is it, cat and mouse right here, trying um, trying to force his hand. And by getting a hand on the ball, you kind of can all but ensure that the defense is now going to recover. You put him, you kind of make him force, and now you get it. Jokic is so good at this. Why he's such a high steal player, but it's not empty calorie steals there are a lot of them in that exact type of, of setup where he's facing a two-on-one situation as the defender if you don't watch Jokic a lot you, you don't realize how valuable this skill set is and, and how much it's a true skill set this isn't a, a you know all of a lucky play he misses the shot but just the hands here somehow keeping a hand on the ball despite not really being in position I mean, he does that kind of stuff a lot. We've seen him, um, you know, this isn't a one-off. It seems like once or twice a game, he has just some sort of suction cup on a basketball he had no chance of getting. So this is a bit of a weird thing to uh, put on the list, but watch your boy Jokic. This might be a sign of growth, a sign of maturity. Look at him at halftime. Talking to Ed Malloy. Working him, trying to get with the official, trying to say, okay, man, lady, let's have a conversation here. Here's what I'm seeing. Here's what you, I don't think you're calling. This had to do with because Yoke got that chicken wing call, so he's working him. I haven't, you know, this, this may be something a little new from Yoke. Calmly going at the officials instead of just wildly going at them. Hmm. A little, little mistake here from Michael Porter in the corner. Whenever you're the one pass away, especially with a shooter in the corner, it's not your responsibility to get over. You stunt at him. Meaning you like kind of dig down, take a little swipe here, try to slow him, but you stick to your guy. You're not in full commit. You have full commit coming from the weak side and from the rim protector, but you can't give up the three-point shot. And that's what he does here. Over over rotates, just out of position to even contest it, gives up a three. Big no-no. And like one of those basketball fundamentals that that I'm sure MPJ will pick up before long. But one of those things right now that that he doesn't have that your average NBA starter does recognize quicker and, and doesn't make that mistake. I just put this clip on here because um, this was a big shot, and it, in real time, um, you know, I kind of forgotten about this one in the in some of the previous stuff we did. But if you recall this moment in the game, Denver's struggling; they hadn't scored, and the, to open the third, just no energy. They've fallen behind by nine points, and the game was really at one of those points where, in the Miami game, it got went from nine to fifteen real quick, and then you're kind of feel like you're out of it. Right now. You get this. Jokic had almost shoots it. He had shot right before and missed a, a three. This is before he got going. Skips it one extra one, and Millsap knocks it down. Millsap, you know, we it's funny. His role on the team may be changing a little bit, but still a guy that I think the Nuggets count on who delivers that shot when he's in position to more often than not.